It is with joy I come to you today to share with you in these devotions. And I trust that you are having a wonderful day thus far. In these devotions, I want us to just think, focus our attention on home. When I say home, I don't mean our dwelling place down here. I mean our dwelling place up there. I know that it will take some time before we all make it home. But one of these days, we will be home. And uh, James W. Akoff wrote a song entitled Over in the Glory Land. A song that we love to sing here at church after observing the Lord's Supper. It is written based on Revelation 21, verse 23, where the scripture said, And the city had no need of the sun, for the glory of God did lighten it. As James thought of it, he said, I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angels band just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. Wow. James was so sure that one of these days, he will stand just over in the glory land. And I believe if you are like me, there are times when our minds begin to think of what home would be like. And uh, I've gone to the scriptures and I have tried to find out what it's going to be like. And I came across some verses in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And I want to base our devotion on these mornings, giving it a little title, Looking for That Glorious City. So in Revelation 21, Verse 9 to 11, the scripture said, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and a high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Well, let me be honest with you. I will try and explain to you in these devotions what this place will look like. But you know, in all my explanation, I still would not have given you the complete picture of what this glorious city looks like. May I say to you that it is said that a vote was taken on what is the most beautiful city in the world. We are told that after the vote was taken, the results came back where Rome, Italy was voted as number one. Coming in second was Florence, Italy. And third, we are told, was France, Paris. I never been to any of those cities but I've looked at pictures of them and read about them. It is amazing to note 
that Rome, Italy has buildings in its city built over 1,000 years ago. With art, you can't imagine. We must acknowledge man way back there, though they did not have modern tools as we have today, they did an outstanding job. Those cities were built by man. They are places we go that we are surprised to see the beauty, the artwork that is placed in those cities. The city that I will be speaking to you about is not one that was built by men. If you can remember, when Jesus was here on earth, he made a promise to his disciples and to us when he said, and John recorded for us in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse number 2 and verse number 3, when he recorded for us, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a place that must be. When you and I have imagined all, all that we could, still will fall short of describing this place. Notice what Paul said to the Corinthian believers in his first letter, chapter 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love them. Could you imagine? He said, no eye had ever seen, no ear had ever ever heard. No man has in his heart the things that God had prepared for them that love him. Wow. Sometimes people try to express their love to us by doing great things for us. But yet he said, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it ever entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. What a father in heaven we have. The apostle John was on the Isle of Patmos, a very small, barren place. He was exiled there because of his testimony for Jesus Christ and for the word. He wrote, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here it is, he's exiled placed on a desert key, a, one could say, in prison, surrounded by water. And he's there just because he stood up for God. God gave this man a glimpse of this place, this city that I'm going to speak to you about in the next few days in our devotion. He gave him a vision of the city that we are going to talk about. John wrote what he saw, and we have it today as he describes what he saw. He gives us details and descriptions of the glorious city that he saw. I am anxious to share it with you. But my time is up for today. Next morning, 
I'll come back and read it for you. And then morning after morning, go in detail and explain to you what John saw that he wrote, that he wanted us to be aware of what he saw. What a glorious city that is. And the truth of the matter is, I am looking for that city. I trust this morning, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you would stop and pay attention to the fact that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And there's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. And you would make the right choice and choose Jesus so that we could be with him and in the place that is prepared for us and not in the place that is prepared for the devil and his angels. If you do not know him, please just acknowledge that you need him. Acknowledge that you are a sinner, you have sinned and that he is the only one to forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins and save you. And let him guide you through life. Live for him until he comes or until he calls us to this glorious city. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have shared with us, all God that you're doing for us. I pray that this devotion will cause believers to be drawn closer to you, to have a closer walk. Oh God, to focus our attention on things above and not on things of this earth. And for the one who don't know you, may they trust you before it's too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, my dear brethren. Please join with me and just share this devotion. I want to thank you so much for so doing. Oh, when I ask in our last devotion to share the testimony, there are those who have shared their testimony and they were kind enough to send me a copy of what they have shared. Let's partner together and do this for the Lord. Do have a great day.